Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Michael Markowski. Welcome to my studio. And today we are going to be making a painting by another one of my very favorite artists, Amrita Shergil. And let's uh, just look. This is the painting that we are going to recreate today. One of my favorite paintings. I had a really hard time trying to figure out which painting of hers to pick. Um, because, I mean, I, I guess I could do dozens of episodes of every single artist. I, I tell you, it's, it is pretty tricky trying to think of which art, like which artist to, to pick, because I've got a lot of favorite artists, um, and then which artwork of theirs, um, because she, she made a lot of work in a very short period of time. She uh, died at the early age of 28 years old of causes which are unclear some people think uh it was uh, the doctors say it was just natural causes as to what that means uh is up for debate um and certain other people believe that she was murdered for some reason or another the family as far as i know uh doesn't buy the fact that she just passed away of natural causes so um kind of a mysterious end to her life there but um, while she was alive, she made a lot of really cool art. Some of it I th that I actually I probably like better than this painting, but are more complex uh, and would take much more time. Um, but uh, this one I, I, I really, I think is, is a great painting for a number of reasons. One is it's, uh, I think, achievable for us to do. But I think it is maybe the most emblematic of her art at this particular time in her career so maybe before we go into all that i want to show um if we look up here you'll see that there's a tracing of this picture and it is in a dropbox folder let's go to if you click there's a link down below i think it's maybe the third link there um, to a dropbox folder and you'll see these are all the paintings we've made thus far in this particular series we made 45 other paintings prior to this in our intro to acrylic painting course that's free and available to anyone on on youtube um, i think there's a link for that somewhere down in the video description and you'll see here's some of the other artworks that are coming up uh, in a short bit on thursday um, we're going to do an A.Y. Jackson painting um, about or of Vimy Ridge, which was a, a, a battlefield in World War One, and it is the, of the one of the anniversaries, the, the anniversary I think of the beginning of Vimy Ridge on Thursday, uh, which is if you're not Canadian, it, it's probably the most famous battle. Um, uh, not that that's a, a thing to celebrate or anything. But it is an important moment in Canadian history that happened during World War One. Anyway, uh, Robert Bateman, an artist um, that has been a mentor to me personally, we, we've met, um, and he's shown me a few things which I use. Um, and then there's also a couple of other Sikh artists. So Amrita uh, Shargil is probably the most, well, most famous Sikh artist or of dis Sikh descent. Uh, known to the Western world, um, perhaps arguably the most famous Indian artist of, uh, well, again, in, in terms of the Western world, she made a, a big crossover. And then we're going to look at a few artists that are probably less well known to people that look like me, um, but are very, very famous in India. And um, so anyway, we'll, we'll get to that because it is Sikh History Month here in Canada. Uh, so I thought, let's it would be really interesting to explore some artists from a totally different culture a culture which um you know is a you know has a long history proud history but in canada again for people that look like me it might not be very familiar right so this is it's been i'm usually working with two three months ahead of where we actually are and so I've been kind of immersed in some of these images for a while, and it's been a really interesting learning experience for me personally, and I hope that that is for those of you that are watching. And then after those artists, we're gonna spend all of May painting artists of Asian descent, right? I've got a whole, and again, I've got about 40 artists that I listed 
and I've been like, oh, okay, how many can we do? Maybe if we don't do the paint the news episodes on Thursdays and we just do master studies all April, we'll get through a, a, a number, a handful of the artists that I love the most. Anyway, Facebook group, here's the link to the Facebook group. So again, most of the people that are watching me right now have never seen me before, never seen these classes. And there is a thriving Facebook group, private Facebook group for just people that are taking these classes and are making art in response and along with me and are uploading their versions of like today's paintings as well as other paintings that they're working on. Um, I'm not gonna go through all of these. Here's Mona Lisa that Vanya did. Very cool, very cool. Let's continue on though. Um, I should mention that um, Amrita Shargill was a very, you know, she was like uh, an iconoclast and somebody that, that uh, was kind of out of her time, like somebody probably a hundred years ahead of her time, um, was a very free-spirited woman. Um, she's seen as like a hero for LGBTQ um, people uh, because of how, you know, uh, just she was she was a uh, a lesbian and proud of it and totally open about it in a period of time that was that would I mean it would raise eyebrows today in certain parts of the world and even here in Vancouver in Canada um, but you can imagine um, in 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 Hungary where she was born and raised and then later in India where she she lived and passed away. Uh, that would have been a, quite a shock, uh, and she did not care. <laughs> um, and so let's just kind of take a quick little uh, look through. I don't know if there's anything in her biography I want to point out. Uh, her father um, was a Sikh aristocrat, a, a fairly wealthy guy, um, and her mother was a Jewish and hung Hungarian Jewish. There we are. Yeah. Um, so she she was kind of somebody straddling two very different cultures and she learned she's from an early age was painting and doing like uh, watercolor paintings and then she went to um in paris to the academy one of the academies here she, she studied painting uh, and i don't know if it says any i i haven't read this here but i've i've, I've here's a book <laughs> That I've been reading for a while um, but she she was part of like she submitted some paintings to the Academy we've talked about this before uh, the power of the the fine art academies in Paris and elsewhere in Europe and she this is a, a great documentary by the way the life and times of Amrita Shergill I, um, this I love this quote Europe belongs to Picasso Matisse and Brock India belongs only to me <laughs> right like to, to be to say something like that as a, like she would have been in her mid-20s to say something like that is like has she had some courage <laughs> uh let's just see here um I, again all these links are in the video description below except that youtube video a uh, beautiful woman um you know like she, she also was photographed a lot, um, and she was photographed a lot by her father. Her father was a photographer as well. Uh, let me see. What do I want to share? Anything else? No. Um, okay. So let's. I think let's dive right into this, and then I'll I'll I'll, I'll rattle off stories as we go. So, as I said, you can print off this image. This is what it looks like if you print it off. And then I'm going to trace it onto a canvas. So, um, the way that I do that, if you've never seen this before, is I use carbon paper. You can buy carbon paper from any art supply store, or, or you should be able to. If you can't find it, there's a link for it in the video description below. Oh, I'm going to sand this. So what I oft what I, I, I do all the time is I get these um, canvas boards, right? There's a link to this exact one. Oops, let's show you. Um, right. 
so there's a link to to this brand which i actually i really like i feel like it's nice and strong and sturdy and also relatively inexpensive it comes to about two dollars per canvas like this as opposed to a dollar at the dollar store which and are far uh inferior <laughs> Okay, so I I've I gessoed this with white gesso. There's a link to the gesso below with 220 grit sandpaper, which I've just stapled to a block a two by four scrap piece of wood. And then you can see how much plaster dust or gesso dust comes off on here. Meaning that this surface is much smoother than it originally was right out of the package. Okay, let's zoom in on a bit here. Okay. The actual original painting itself is, is kind of tall and narrow. So I have extended the sides, um, which if you have a very tall and narrow painting or canvas that you want to use, you could use that. I'm going to put the her this image maybe a little bit closer to the bottom, so I have a little bit extra space at the top, because um, I'm using nine by twelve inch canvases. Okay. Put this paper underneath, and I use this carbon paper. Uh, this I think this is, would be the fourth time I've used it. I can see Mona Lisa's tracing. You probably it's probably almost impossible for you to see it on camera, but um, you don't just have to use it once. I, somebody in the chat said something about, or maybe it was one of my students uh, at Emily Carr, who's, which is the university I teach at, um, that they've been using the same sheet of carbon paper for years so um, it, it depends on on what you're using it for if you're just doing something like this and you just need the basics transferred onto your canvas for composition then you can use it uh, over and over and over again because you're not really concerned about whether the line how clear and perfect the lines are I did used to use carbon paper for um, for years as part of my art practice. I would I was tracing things onto really nice paper and um, exhibit those tracings, and so I really wanted the, the the you know I'd use a brand new sheet of carbon paper each time because I didn't want it to be missing. Um, any anyway. All of this so we're gonna be painting over all these details so I'm not really gonna spend too long uh, getting every single fold in here the some of these other like the the details of the I think these are like the patterns on the fabric I may not even trace those in here just because I'll do that later on as I'm painting and sometimes when you get a lot of lines on there, it can be kind of distracting. Right? You're like, oh, okay, which one is what? What am I supposed to do here? course you could eyeball all of this I just um, I've taught a, a whole 40 episode or was it 20 I think it was 40 episodes yeah drawing course last year which is again free and available to anyone at their own convenience on YouTube um, on my channel there and so I, I sh I, I've shown how to to do all of this by eye if you want, but obviously it just takes longer. 
I want to get straight to the painting um, as quickly as possible. Okay, I think that's good. So after I've done a little tracing like that, I just turn this up and take a look. You know, part, top of her hair is missing because I didn't have the carbon paper there. But it looks pretty good. I just want to double check. I'm not missing anything. Uh, let's say I didn't get you know, like fingernails or something to do that. These other. It does look very different without the pattern on there, hey? Very interesting how that works. And let's see, I'll just capture that. Okay, cool. So now we've got our image on the canvas, just like that, nice and quick. And, you know, even if you didn't want, like, let's say you have some sort of moral objection to tracing. Um, you could draw your image onto another piece of paper, like in your sketchbook, tear it out, and still use the carbon paper to transfer that image onto the canvas. And that way you're not trying to draw and erase on the canvas itself, which can, you know, leave eraser marks and uh, it, you might kind of smudge the pencils. And it, this way it looks nice and clean and clear. So when I begin my painting, I don't have to, uh, I'm not just kind of struggling to see what is what, right? Cool. I like that already. So, wow, look at all the comments in the chat there. Um, I'll get to some of those maybe once I will put our first uh, layer of paint on here. So let's just take a look at this painting and think about what we need to get um, a color on here. So it this one is interesting as you know which color should we put on there uh, you know uh, hmm i'm I generally you know as as a rule what i would usually not as a rule but you know if if in doubt I, and i can't figure out what to do i would go directly to a warm yellow right that would be you're, you're, you you can't go wrong with a, a warm yellow as like your base for a painting that would you know and if you're you know most most like landscape painters um, and even portrait painters will put some kind of a warm uh, earthy tone down underneath the painting to kind of get it started. So you can't go wrong with that. The only th the, the only reason I'm, I'm in my mind thinking about another possibility is in this image there's a lot of uh, like pinks and like magenta rose kind of colors. And so in my mind I'm thinking, hmm, it might be kind of fun to do like a a pink base underneath all of this um, because we haven't really done anything like that before, have we? But, you know what? Um, that would be something very... That, that would be my own... Uh, that, that might be something I would do as a playful kind of test. But I think, you know, if people are tuning in and watching and want to actually learn how to paint this painting as close to how she painted it, I think we'll just stick with a warm uh, yellow. So let's, we'll do that. So let's, uh, let's get some paint on the canvas here. I'm just going to use this warm yellow. And you know what, well, warm yellow... Maybe we'll make it a l just a little bit more orange and peachy. So I'm just, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna add just a little bit of this. Um, let's see which brush I use this brush. I'm just take this paint off my hand there and I'm gonna mix it in here. Pretty subtle change here, right? So I'm just gonna give tiny little bit of extra 
orangey punch to this picture. And I'm going to add some water. And this is really the only time I ever use water when I'm painting with acrylics. Um, just to kind of thin it out. And so that when I paint with it, it's going to be a little bit more transparent. And it's basically like the white of the canvas is mixing with the paint. Uh, one of the reasons why I'm going over the same, um, like you see me kind of brushing left and or right to left, up and down, is I just want to try to make sure I've, I've got paint in all the little nooks and crannies of the picture. That there's not like little gaps um, that I'm missing. And then, you know, I also like to get the edges, the sides of the canvas, even if it's a canvas board, it just makes things look a little bit cleaner and more professional. Okay, beautiful. You know, again, very super subtle difference between this and just the plain uh, warm yellow right out of the tube. So I'm just gonna wash this brush. Okay, so let's just, uh, I'm going to let this dry and just to make my, my own cleanup a little bit easier, I'm just going to wipe this away now and that way I don't have to scrub to get all that yellow off. Okay. So let me just take a second to look at some of these comments while this painting dries. Um, oh, we saw it have Gail here. It says, uh, hi everyone, I love this painting. So much emotion in that face and sadness, but full of emotion. Thanks ahead of time, Michael, for sharing your time with us. Thank you very much, Gail, for saying that. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, definitely. One of this painting, you know, there's, there is this, there's an intensity to her look in this painting, which is in a lot of um, Amrita's other paintings. There's kind of a sadness or loneliness, as, as some authors have described, in in her look or in the in the look of the women in some of these paintings. Um, I'm, I won't speculate as to why that is, um, but, you know, I think, again, just, you know, she, as an artist and as a person, she was very independent-minded, very forceful, um, you know, was going to do whatever she wanted to do, no matter what her family or anybody else thought, uh, the societies that uh, she, she was a part of believed or thought. Um, uh, but I think, you know, that not everybody, not every wom woman that she met had that same level of uh, confidence and or um, uh, maybe agency to, to control their destiny as much as she did. Right? Um, oh, you know, okay, I, was, I, I got a story I was going to mention. I, I started, I know I was gonna, started telling a story and then I forgot. I'll come back to it uh, about her in the academies later. Let me see, Joshua, hi Joshua, says he's already prepped his canvas and palette, ready to go. 
Very cool. And there's Molly says hi. Mage says hi. Hi, everyone. Deborah, hi, is there? <laughs> Deborah did not want to do another portrait, but she is just so beautiful. That's true. Uh, Peter says, I've been using the same piece of carpet paper since Andy Warhol painting, and it's still chugging along. Yeah, my goodness, that is, when did we do the Warhol? That was back in October, maybe, or so. So I'm glad that that is still, <laughs> um, still alive. Um, let me see, I'm going to look at some of these other comments while I quickly blow dry this here. So Joshua suggests Jean-Francois Millet, who was, yeah, a great realist painter from the mid-1800s. Uh, very influential painter. Um, what is that name of that painting? The people who are taking the potatoes out of the fields, the unpicked potatoes. In Europe, there's like this thing where you can go onto a farmer's field and you can, you can pick the the vegetables after the farmers pick their vegetables and it's totally legal the kind of thing you probably get shot if you tried to do here in north america and one of the paintings he made very famous painting uh, uh yeah Millet would be great I, I i haven't thought about him um but yeah i would be interested to do him for sure molly says please let me know when in the time of the drawing class i'm interested in that um uh, and may says the drawing classes are done already. They are stored in Michael's YouTube account. Just look at the playlist. Yes, yeah, so, um, yeah, so the, all, all those episodes are, are there. I, I just got an email from someone, actually someone who was very, very generous in their donation, um, uh, sent me some money to thank me for the drawing class, which we did almost a year ago now. So, yeah, that's going on. So people seem to really enjoy that. There was a lot of people watching every episode we did of that. So that was really cool. And again, another community that was formed from that. And many of you are still here. I, I think May was there and Peter was there when we did the whole drawing class. Who've been with me for a whole year, right? Um, uh, Joshua says the painting, including the sower. Yes, I think. Is that what it's called? Anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about Millet when we talk about Millet. We'll do a Millet painting for sure. Okay, so <laughs> let's get our canvas primed up. I'm going to put a little bit more paint on here. Um, so, yeah, there's. I, I, I pointed out a really great uh, YouTube video, uh, kind of a, a history. It's about 30 minutes long on Amrita Shirt Gill. And I encourage you to watch that. She's, you know, recognized as, you know, people will say the, the mother of Indian art or Indian painting, um, kind of, you know, arguably the, the most famous man or woman um, uh, artist, as far as, as us here in the West know which um, you know I think probably Indian art and culture maybe for that matter is a bit of a blind spot for uh, us in the West so that's why I was kind of really excited I'm, I'm as you may start to gather going well even this whole master study one of my big goals is to really broaden my own horizons and hopefully those people who are watching um, 
w and uh, of, of the great arts that exist outside of North America and Europe. Um, and also as a bit of a Even, even my students in university, when I ask them to cite their favorite artists, I would say 90% of them say Van Gogh and Picasso. And I think like, okay, that's great. But how about artists that look a little bit more like you? Because I have my, the, my students are from all over the world. And, you know, Picasso and Van Gogh, despite the fact of being the incredible artists they are, don't need any any more attention than they've already received, right? Um, so okay, so let's let's. How do we want to approach this painting here? As I get some paint brushes out, I'm gonna get a selection of small and large brushes. So, one of the interesting things about the way that she painted, and we haven't, we didn't really look at too many of her other paintings because some of her other paintings are, uh, there's a lot of nudes that she painted. Uh, so that's one reason why I haven't really shown too many because I was going to give like a little bit of like, if you have, uh, if, you're, if, if seeing a nude human body is offensive to you or whatever, you may want to look away. Uh, maybe we'll, we'll take a little closer look later on. Um, but she painted, like, she has, like, a very loose painting style in, in places. Like, so when we look at the fabric on this outfit, like, it, it just feels like she's moving relatively quickly, almost like scribbles, right? In fact, actually, let's, if we, you know, if we look into some of these areas here, like, sh this feels like a brush that's moving really quickly here. Um... And then same thing down here. It almost looks like graffiti or something, right? It's just like, like you really get the, the feeling that she's moving her brush really quickly. And then, and then, as we might expect, you know, when people paint faces, they tend to be a little bit more careful. So I, what's interesting in her painting is is the different speeds that she's working as she paints. So I might try to do a little bit of that, or at least demonstrate it for for those of you guys watching. So you have a little bit of a sense if you want to uh, do that, how we might go about that. The first thing I think I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the background a little bit. Uh, at least put in one layer in the background and then we will start working in the center just because we're going to kind of layer over top of that background. So. The background and a lot of the green here, except for maybe some of the darker stuff, almost or sorry, almost all of the green is a bit of a, a uh, warm green and a bit of like, um, let's see if we look at our, uh, let me put these side by side. So the a lot of the green is using warm yellow and warm blue, right? So we have, you see how we have these, this kind of grassy green in a lot of the painting, except for some of this here on her, you know, some of these highlights, which are, are much closer to the outside of the color wheel and therefore more intense as we're moving away. You know, as we move away from the neutral core, the colors get brighter and brighter. And as colors get closer to the neutral core, they get gray and brown, right? So we have a few highlights with some of these brighter colors using cool blue and cool yellow. But for the most part, I'm, I think we're using like warm yellows, maybe warm and cool yellow, right? Okay, so just kind of, it's, I think it's helpful just to, a little, um, refresher on that. So um, let's uh, let's begin here mixing. I'm going to take a a warm blue, and I'm 
I get some warm yellow on my brush. Let's see how I get this. I'll just share this here. This kind of, yeah, it's, I feel like it's a grassy green. I'm originally from Calgary, Alberta, and this is what the grass looks like. If there's any, it's like kind of, the, the grass, you know, the end of winter before spring kicks in, right? Before it's, it starts kind of really getting a lot of life to it. So I like this color. Let's mix, I'm gonna just mix a bit more of it. So I just gotta, actually gonna fill this in the background. Okay. So I'll move that out of the way. And then I'm just gonna start spreading this on here. And I'm gonna go mostly vertical kind of um, lines. And I wouldn't worry, like, see how mine, it's a little bit patchy in places? I don't mind that, or at least that's kind of closer to how she painted. Now, she would have been painting with oil paints, no question. Like, acrylics weren't really available. There was some very early acrylics that existed prior, you know. Um, but really, acrylics aren't commercially available until kind of the 60s, really. So she's painting with oil paints, as, as almost every artist we've looked at, except maybe, who would be a, Warhol was one of the earliest adopters of acrylic paint. Uh, David Hockney is a um, an artist who was an early adopter, if we use that term, um, of acrylic paint. There's, even to this day, a, quite a big stigma against acrylic paint and that oil paint is for serious gallery museum artists and, and acrylics are for beginners. And um, I really think, I mean, more and more that's changing. I think as... Quite frankly, I think it's it's because some of the older generation of, of artists and people who like were my teachers in art school are you know, passing away. Uh, they were the ones that were really kind of held on to the, those notions, and as their as that generation kind of um, retires, you have a lot more younger artists and younger being people like me in their 40s and 50s who don't have quite so, that kind of hang up on materials. Okay, so I'm gonna let, should I, yeah, I'm gonna let this dry. I may even take, you know what, I think I'm gonna also do, have a little bit of fun here. And let's, let's clean this brush off, just gonna wipe off because I'm gonna mix I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna I'm gonna put a um, a cool yellow and cool blue I'm gonna put that as a kind of underpainting on almost all of her clothes here and then afterwards I'm going to paint over them a little bit this will give me a bit more of that super bright green here painting direct you know I've already got this this warm uh, yellow under here so even as bright as this color is when I paint it on top of it it's going to kind of balance it out and suck out some of the intensity of that color which is fine um, I'm 
not even going to be too concerned about doing a perfect job of this. See, I'm also using a pretty big brush. I think one of the things I often see artists do is when they're painting at this stage, they really get into the tiny brushes and um, you want to, at this stage, really feel quite liberated. And, and if you're using a bigger brush, it, it kind of prevents you from getting too in, far into the details at the early stages of your painting. So we got a bit of that really bright green in here. Now it might not look super, super bright right now, but if we, when we later on put some white, or not white, but it'll be kind of like uh, um, the same color, but w with some white in some of these areas, it's gonna start popping more. Of course, we're gonna probably, we're gonna paint th this color that we put in the background we're going to put some of that into some of these darker areas. And in fact, down here, this is going to be dark anyway. This will be pretty close to a black, but let's just manipulate that. Like this whole area, these are going to get really, really dark as we go further and further down. Okay. And I'm just leaving these little spaces here because that's where the um, we're gonna have a little bit of magenta down there. Maybe we can paint some of that in now as well. Okay. So let's think about these bright magentas. Um, so to get that really bright color, let's use, so this is our, our cool red. Um, I'm going to take a bit of cool yellow and even just a tiny bit of white in here. Okay, let's start just down here. And you can see how kind of like, look how I'm not really being too careful with the way that I paint, right? And I'm, cause I'm trying to, get a little bit of the spirit of the way that she painted in the way that I'm approaching this painting. Right, I think, you know, uh, we talked about kind of her, her attitudes towards uh, like her sexuality and um, uh, just sort of her, her ambivalence towards social norms at the time um, in the way that she lived her life but I think also just in the way that she you know it's also reflected in the way that she painted is kind of a little bit of there's there's a lot of boldness in the way that she painted right she's um, there's I, you don't I don't get the sense that she's overthinking or questioning herself too much which takes a lot of confidence, right? Um, 
so she was a confident woman. Let's go. Um, okay, so this feels pretty good. We're like we're we're into the painting already. That's good. Uh, let's see. What do I want to do next? I'm wondering if we should. Um, you know what? Okay, so. The way that I would probably paint this entire painting is the next step that I would do would be to start painting the details or the the uh, the, the her skin tones and start mixing up browns and you know the kind of a brownish pink for her cheeks. So that's how I would start painting. Now, one thing that again I've noticed I've mentioned this before is that. When I start doing that, you know, I, I'll, I'll obliterate the face, basically, and lose all the detail in the face. I don't mind that. I don't really care about how accurate I am towards what the original painting is or the, the getting a likeness, whether it's the Mona Lisa we've painted or e even in our Paint the News class when we've painted a couple of real people. Um, that doesn't concern me at, at all. And I also have maybe years of painting... Um, experience I, I i can feel like when i look at another image if i keep my you know my drawing kind of close by i can kind of refer to it but i know that other people get pretty anxious when if if we just paint over the face and they they lose where the eyes and nose goes it's like oh my goodness how where do i so I I try to remember keep that in mind when I'm painting, so that um, what I have started doing is inverted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint some of the darker lines first. That way, no matter what we do, we'll still see those lines on the face, like for the nose and, and mouth and stuff, right? So. Um, so to do that, let's mix a really dark color. We could probably use this other, this darker color for some of the other stuff. So let's take our warm blue. Basically, we're going to make something that's going to cross over the neutral core here. So maybe let's start that with a, a brown, right? So here's the color that we used. This is a little bit of a darker version of it because there's more blue in it. But this is the exact same color we put in the background, right? Our warm yellow and our warm blue. Let's continue with this blue or the warm theme. I'm going to take some warm red. And so what we're developing here is a brown, right? So now we've got a pretty kind of a, a reddish brown. If we want to go a little bit darker, we add more blue to it. Now I'm just going to take a bit of, speaking of darker, I'm going to take some of my cool blue. And at first it kind of seems to lighten up, and then as I mix it, it gets, it looks like a very, very dark gray. And again, I know this is, we've talked about this many times before, but if you're new, right? I would suggest you take the whole painting class again, but if you're new, what we basically just did is we took some warm yellow, we mixed it with some warm blue, so we got this kind of very grassy, less intense green, like very, like far less intense than this color. And we, we talk when we talk about it, when I'm saying intensity, that's a technical term in color for how saturated the color is. Right? You could use it's a very saturated color. As they move towards the neutral core, though, these colors, when we mix them across the color wheel, they lose their intensity. All right, so we had this, we had a color like over here, and then I took some warm um, red, right? So now it took this color that was close to the neutral core and yanked it even closer, right? So then we start getting a kind of a brown color. And then I pulled it back with some of the, the cold blue. So now we're, we're like right here in the middle. We're right in the neutral core. And that's why we get this, you know, 
if I added white to it, we would get a, a color that looks just like um, gray. Right? You'd be able to see its grayness pretty clearly. But anyway, I'm using this color because this is going to simulate as close to a black as I can get without actually putting black onto my palette here. So now I'm going to use my smallest brush. And then I'm just going to go in here. Is everything dry? Pretty much. And I'm just going to do a little bit of uh, uh, outlining. Let's make sure this is dry enough, I guess, on some of these. Um, So I may end up having to do this a second time. This is why when I do it myself, I don't do this because it takes a little bit of extra time. But, you know, if you're a little bit less confident outlining it like this means you're, you're less likely to be panicking because you lost the the pencil lines with the face. Now, as I said, I'm going to paint over a lot of this eventually. some of her hair. Her hair is quite dark anyway, right? So I think we could probably just start painting this hair now. Although I, I might actually lighten it with this paint. Um, a little bit more blue here in a second. Let's outline I'm just going to paint this straight kind of as with the dark color that I have and I can always go in and add little tiny wisps of bright well I wouldn't worry too much though about making it super solid and, and perfect. That like I may even just to show that I'm gonna let's say leave a few areas a little bit open here. Like that. So that I can add a little color and easily inside there. You know what, as I look at you know, I bet you I bet you the way that she painted this painting is she probably used either charcoal or maybe even a paintbrush with a dark color just like this to do the original lines on her canvas. I don't know how big this painting is. I suspect it's probably like 20 by 30 or like 30 by 50 or something like so kind of, you know, like that big, I would I imagine. Um, and what a lot of artists do is they put this kind of a yellow ground down and then they use a darker color or charcoal or chalk 
and then just paint directly onto the canvas and then they can kind of wipe away what they the lines they don't like with a rag because if you're painting with oil paint you can just use a rag with like a turpentine or, or odorless mineral spirits or OMS as it's called and you just like paint a little bit and you could just wipe whatever you don't want right off so I imagine that's what she did so you know what let's maybe do a little bit of that let's do some outlining right now with a, with some we're just gonna yeah and then we can paint out whatever we don't like later on or and then paint you know if we if some of this gets lost we can just paint little bits of it back where we feel we need I think that might uh, Because usually we wait till the right near the very end. Like when we painted the Fra Angelico painting on Sunday. For those of you that may have missed that episode, we did a, a special Easter episode where we painted um, uh, the scene of Jesus emerging from his tomb. After he rose from the dead, um, and that one I, th I think turned out really well. I was pretty happy with that. I know a lot of people were busy with their Easter dinners and all that kind of stuff but we still had a good number of people painting along with me and you know, not everybody celebrates Easter um, and not everyone has family and friends nearby or even able to get online to join them for a zoom dinner or So there's a bit of confusion in my own mind as to what does flowers and what's fingers, and you may have seen that in that in my outline. The other thing I would, you know, one technique you can you can use as you paint a painting like this is, you know, we've done a lot of painting where we are really tight up on the brush. Right? We're we're painting almost like we're using a pencil, which is which is great for for small details. Like you want to be able to get kind of close in to kind of get those small details. But when you're painting a painting like this, you may want to think about taking your hand and moving further back onto the brush, which means you're gonna lose some control over the painting process. And you can see like then you might get a little bit of the shake of your hand kind of coming in as you paint and you might, might get a little bit sloppy, but um, it does sort of, you know, it, sometimes it causes really interesting things to happen because you lose a little bit of control and we get just a little bit more of a spotty line. Right, you can kind of get a little bit more wobbliness. Which, you know, again, some people, it's gonna drive them absolutely batty to do that. Um, and maybe it requires some 
you know, confidence to be able to do stuff like this. But, you know, if you never try it because you're, you don't feel like you're confident enough, then you'll really never be able to do it. Right? You some, at some point, you have to take that leap of faith. And especially some of the stuff down here where it's uh, you know it's darker it's gonna be much darker anyway okay. Like doesn't like for me I love the way this looks right now. Right? I feel like I'm quite happy like I if if I had to if I had to stop right now I could I could live with this painting in this state. Right? It, it I'm not uh, I'm not bothered by the way it looks right now. It in fact it kind of reminds me a lot of like a Picasso work um, from the the uh, early 1920s, he did a, a number of paintings similar to this in his kind of neoclassical style. That's and which is my favorite period of, of his work as well. It's this the post cubist or kind of mid cubist phase, I guess, after he finished doing the the uh, the early analytical cubism. Then he kind of moved to this classical phase and then went into uh, synthetic cubism. That's I think we've talked about cubism a little bit, but <laughs> um, oh, thanks, Deborah. Uh, the the original painting is twenty two inches by thirty six inches. Thank you for pointing that out. She says I'm captivated by this painting. I would like to paint just the torso up and focus on the eyes. She looks so sad. Yeah, absolutely. Feel free to. Uh, you know, with any of the paintings too, you know, it's your painting. I'm not there in the room. You're not being graded for this painting. So however, whatever you want to take from it, feel free to um, innovate and play. You know, I, I clearly I admire this artist tremendously. You know, I think she was, you know, both a um, innovator in terms of art and, you know, uh, she really introduced modernism to India, and, and and I think it's also just, you know, she, um, uh, you know, I think for for anyone outside of European culture, she sort of showed how you could integrate some of the things that were happening in 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 art in Europe, like the these all this avant garde painting, like cubism and such, and she showed how you could kind of take some of those techniques and ideas and blend them into um, other non-Western cultures and the rich art that they had and have, right? And kind of making that bridge between them, I think, is, is really interesting. And which is, I think, also why um, she's compared to Frida Kahlo. I think people think, oh, she, they're comparing her to Frida Kahlo because she was kind of a liberated woman and um and um but i think both frida kahlo and amritsar gill uh were were also you know and social innovators as well but you know were from non-western cultures non non-white cultures if we want to right and took what was happening in within modernism and avant-garde painting and kind of pulled that into their own orbit um, and brought it into their own culture and made something something brand new from it um, yeah so she's a groundbreaking artist but anyway I, what I want to say is she's I'm super admiring of her work and if other people find something really exciting and inspiring about her work I want to 
to really dive into a detail. I could see people focusing in on the way she drew the painted her hands. You know, her the way that she did hands in her art is is um, kind of very unique to she has her own style it's it's something that you know the way that she paints hands is not really I haven't seen too many people paint them in a particular kind of way like even the way that I'm painting it is I'm bringing my own style into it um, anyway long story short let's uh, continue um, where should we go next let's I think we should work on you know i'm gonna blow dry all of this before i start smudging anything that's probably a good idea Okay, so let's, I'm, I'm, right now the, the decision I'm having in my mind is about, is about should we paint this kind of um, pink colors, this blush that we see now, should we paint that and then the brown over top of it? Or should we do the opposite? Should we paint this kind of brown and then these kind of brighter highlights? Um, good question, as I think to myself. Um, it's not, you know, it doesn't make much of a difference. I think, you know what, let's do a little bit of the, the pink colors and then we're gonna do some brown, and we might do a little bit of pink back on top of that afterwards, but we'll have to, we'll play it by ear as we, we get there. So, let's, uh, um, Deborah says, it's beautiful right now, Michael. Thank you, Deborah. And Joshua says, hey, Michael, I was wondering if I can give suggestions for master studies or no. Yeah, for sure, yeah, bring them on. Yeah, I got uh, uh, your um, Millet suggestion. I'm always, I, you know, you got, you've had some great suggestions so far. I think, I don't know if we've incorporated one. I don't know who suggested Robert Bateman and who suggested um, some of the other paintings, but well, I would say half of the artwork that, that we've been making so far is, is from suggestions that you guys have. So I'm going to take this cool um, red that we had before, and I'm going to use some glazing fluid here because if I paint that on there it might be just a little bit intense Come on, this is, looks like I've it's dried up a bit okay here we go so I squeeze a little bit of glazing fluid on there and this is just going to make it a little bit more transparent and I can blend it a little bit easier um, in fact what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to wipe it off my oops <laughs> I've got a few of these cheap brushes I've glued I'm gluing behind me so this, I'm going to glue this one after so I just anyway I cleaned my brush off uh, just wiped it off and then I went back into this paint so that way I've got rather than because I still had all this color on there now I've got a much more transparent paint on here so let's just kind of take a, a second you can see how 
It, see, this is exactly the same paint that we used for here, except I used glazing fluid in there. So look at the difference between this pink and this pink here. Right, exact same color. It's just that I've modified it with some glazing fluid. All right, I'm just gonna paint this all in here. You could get away in a pinch with, um, I'm gonna paint it right over, I'm gonna do all of her, her skin this way. You could get away probably with um, just clear acrylic medium. I think that would also work. Um, Notice I didn't really put any on our forehead. We, our foreheads tend not to have too much warmth in there because the skin is so thin. Okay. Cool. I mean, we're already getting pretty close, right? So that so we've we've now done a, a quick glaze with the cool red. So to get this color, remember, I think we had cool red maybe a little bit of cool yellow together and a little bit of white or maybe maybe there wasn't any yellow in there I can't remember either way it was just really mostly cool red and white and then we used the glazing fluid in there right so now let's make a brown and I'm gonna we're, we want it to be a warm brown let's Retire that brush for today's episode. Um, so to make a brown, let's get a different brush. I think I've used that brush for about sixty paintings now. So if it if it falls apart at that point for what it was part of a set, um, so it was probably. You know, I've spent ten dollars on the set for five brushes. So that's a, a ultimate about a two dollar brush that's lasted for sixty paintings in six months, right? So not bad. <laughs> um, okay, so what I'm doing, I'm taking my warm yellow. I'm gonna take my warm blue. Let's scoop some warm blue up here. So now we've got a warm green, the same green we put in our background. Stir this up a bit, and I'm going to take my warm red in here. Just going to mix this up, and now we've got kind of a nice brown. However, I don't see this brown anywhere in the painting. This is a, pr a pretty dark brown. So there's a few things I can do right now. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of white anyway. I'm gonna, and let's mix it off to the side. So that's good. But now it's a little bit too dull. So I'm going to introduce more yellow back into this color. Now it's a little bit too yellow, so let's put a little bit more of the darker paint. When I mix these, I always kind of mix, kind of move around. So now I'm over here. Okay. And you can see when I, when I take this, I just turn my brush and I spin to get the paint inside of there out. 
That's a pretty good color. Maybe just a tad more yellow. We'll see. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put my slow dry medium here. I'll just... Or so this is my, not my slow dry, my, my glazing fluid. My apologies. So my glazing fluid. And I'm going to take that and with my brush, I could wipe my brush off. Maybe I should, I'll do that. I'll just wipe all of that paint off. And take this uh, glazing fluid here. And now I've got a, like a very transparent brown. Right? You see how like when I paint it's like barely visible? Which is perfect. Because now I can take this color and let's take a look at this. And let's say you know, when I'm looking for this, like, what, you know, I can paint it into a place where I know it's going to be dark, let's say underneath her neck here. And look, I mean, it barely changes anything, right? Barely anything changes. So let's paint this a bit onto her forehead here. And, uh, around her eyes. And over her ears. So, right now, super subtle, barely any, we noticed, you know, I may even, I'm not even sure if many people can even see the change I'm doing here. But that's good, right? Because, again, I, I always think of, like, glazing as the perfect thing for people who are beginning and are maybe a little bit anxious. So let's go in here, let's take a little bit more paint on our brush. So this is a little bit darker. But still, comparatively, not that dark at all. So I'm going to just paint this over here. I'm going to keep a little bit of uh, some of this color just for highlight purposes. So when it comes to glazing, we could do take this exact same color and just paint it in thin layers over and over and over and over again, right? See how I just go over this neck and the neck? Well, I don't even know if you can see that. <laughs> it gets a little bit darker. Even in this face, I don't know if I want to do too much more in like on the, her, uh, forehead there. So I think I'm going to use the blow dryer and then I'm going to come back and we're just going to do this again. If I want, I could go very, very slow. I'm going to try to pick up the pace a little bit. So I'm instead, I'm just going to go see my darker color that I've mixed. I'm going to take just a bit of that. This darker brown that I began with. Let's take some glazing fluid. Okay. So again, I'm going to go test it out on a, one of the darker areas of my painting. Start seeing a bit more dramatic kind of change here. I'm actually, I might use a smaller brush to get into stuff around her eyes. Take a closer look. Thank you. 
darkening around the mouth. So there's kind of a bit of pink highlight on her shoulder there. And then it gets darker and darker as we go down towards her hands. Let's just sort of zoom up here so you can see her hands as well. Such nice, subtle. It's, it takes some time, obviously. But if you really want to get like, um, like really, s like nice, smooth transitions from one color to another, glazing. Oh, I didn't realize this is also dark on this side here. I don't know why. It's spaced out on that. I think I'm, I'm probably going to put some white over top where this earrings go and then I'll paint that afterwards. Getting blending colors get smooth transitions is pretty hard to do with um, acrylics. You can do it much easier with oil paints but with acrylics it's a little bit trickier. So now I'm just actually going to take a bit of that brown right out of that we mixed earlier be a little too dark. This is the brown with very little, or with a little bit of glazing fluid in there. I'm just sort of getting a bit impatient with the, the time, so I'm just being a little bit more bold with my choice of uh, paint here. Darkening these areas. Um, I'm just gonna take the same dark color. That I, so I took. The, I've been taking this paint, this dark color, and I'm just gonna take some slow or the glazing fluid so I'm having a dark color but it's it's a transparent dark color and So I'm just going to try to move things along just by going with a little bit of a this darker brown right as quickly as possible here just to Uh, Joshua says, also dipping it with water would be a cheaper way to glaze. Um, yes. Uh, I will. 
I would discourage it, but if it's all you have, like we did in our, our intro painting class, we did, uh, I didn't introduce glazing fluid until the, I think towards the very, very end of the 40 episodes. And so we, yeah, we did do a bunch of glazing with, or, or just using water and acrylics. However, I'd actually say it, it's more difficult to do that than it is to use glazing fluid. Glazing fluid, you'd be surprised how much easier it makes your life. Um, okay. okay, I'm going to blow dry that because I keep now I'm scrubbing the paint off. Let's just continue here. Yeah, I don't like that that let's see I have to just Okay. Um so I've now now I'm basically just using the brown that I used a mixed earlier, that darker brown, just to paint in a bunch of oops, darker stuff here. dry this again right under the neck just because it's kind of chunky here Okay, so 
Um, let me think. So, just touching up this area here. So what I did is I was painting wet paint. I let it semi-dry, and then I tried to paint more paint on the wet paint, and it kind of peeled off a bit. Um, so I left it. It was kind of a weird bright area in the middle of that dark, so I was trying to re restore it, basically. Um, okay. I think one of the things that, that, that can be a little confusing at this point is, you know, we're painting this, and we're, this is kind of looking nice, but now it feels like it's too dark compared to this, and we might want to be lightening it up. But of course, the, this here is going to get darker anyway. So that's why I'm gonna, I want to kind of keep moving around as we paint this painting, rather than just try to get the arm perfect and the face perfect. We want to sort of keep building elsewhere in the painting, because it's just too hard to judge them uh, on their own. So, or, or each individual little place. So let's back this out. And back this out. Deborah says, I am not pleased with my Mona Lisa, but what I'm happy with is her apparel, for I really discovered using the medium, and I was very surprised with the outcome. Um, that's, that is awesome to hear. You know, I as much as it would be really cool for every single time you guys made a painting or even myself, every time I make a painting, for it to be a perfect painting that I'm really, really happy with, the 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 reality is is that you're not going to be able to make a perfect painting all the time. No artist has ever made a perfect painting ever t every time. Think about any artist you really, really like. Go to the library, get a book of theirs, including Emery de Chargill. Uh, you'll be hard pressed to find even 25% of the paintings that you see in there that you think are just outstanding. The majority of the, you'll be like, yeah, some, some of you are kind of flipping through. Hmm, pretty good, pretty, pretty good. And then, you know, then you see like, wow, here's like great painting. Whoa, masterpiece. Wow. And then, okay, there's a few average or even, oh, this one's awful. Ooh. How did this one? They probably shouldn't even have put this in the book. Oh. Okay, there's a good one. Whoa, that's a great, right? So that's what happens when we look at the masters of art is there's, you know, 20, if you're, if, if you are making 25% of all the paintings you make are excellent, then you are a master. Think about like baseball. You know, the best baseball players of all time hit the ball about, you know, 35% of the time. 35% of the time. The rest of the time they strike out, right? So 65% of the time they fail, but 35% of the time they succeed. And yet they are Hall of Fame baseball players, right? So it's not about making... You know, you want, maybe you want to strive for bringing those numbers up a little bit better, but don't be hard on yourself if, you know, every, f you know, only one out of every four paintings you make are paintings you like. You know, we've done, I've got, this is a bin back here full of all 60 paintings we've made so far, or however many we made. And there are, there's a few in there that are real stinkers <laughs> that I have made. And we'll, we, can, we can talk about that at some point. I was thinking about grading all of those paintings and then showing you my results and also how I feel about them later on, like after a year's gone by. Because sometimes you, you give yourself a grade on a painting that you just think is a real stinker and then years go by and you're like, wow, that's this is the best thing I've ever done. Thank goodness I didn't throw it out or paint over it because now I can appreciate it for what it is. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Let's, uh, I think what I want to do is let's start darkening uh, the background and her robes, which I think are probably a very sim similar color. So we're going to use this same color that we mixed earlier, which was 
our warm blue, cool blue, I think cool yellow. I mean, basically, it's I wouldn't worry about <laughs> the the mixture because it's just gonna. We're just trying to get a pretty darn dark color. I think a little bit on the cooler side because it is the background and help push it a little bit further back. But so let's do cool blue. Let's start out with some cool blue. Get that out of my brush. Let's move to the cool uh, yellow. Okay, that's weird. Why did that? <laughs> Got a ghost in the room here. Okay. Unless somebody's taking over my computer. Okay, so I got my cool blue, cool yellow. Let's add <clears throat> some cool red to that color. This is actually a gorgeous color. It's like a really deep, deep teal. Hmm, good. Keep that color in mind. I like that a lot. So if I add the more red I put into this mixture, the more I'm going to get a cool brown. Um, I like that a lot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add some cool blue in here, and that's going to just going to make it even darker. So let's take this color, and I'm again I'm going to add. Uh, you know what? Just as just out of interest, I'm going to add some. Um, let me. I'm gonna add. Do I have clear acrylic medium here? Give me one second, just because I've been talking about you. Okay, so there's some, um, this is a clear acrylic matte medium. So matte medium is essentially just paint without the color in it, All right? So um, basically if you want to mix your own pigments, which there's some nutty people out there who still do it, they go, you can, you can go to the art supply store. I, I don't see, it's very uncommon. But you can get like a little container. It's almost like buying a little bit of glitter. They come in a very small, like a little pouch or in a small, um, uh, you know, it'd be like here's some like hand lotion. You know, it'd be something similar to this, right? You have hand lotion, but instead it's like a powdered pigment. And you could buy that powdered pigment and you could mix it with matte medium and you'd have paint. That's basically what you have, right? Um, except, so this is just clear. So I'm just gonna, I, since I've been talking about the possibility, let's, I'm gonna do a little experiment. So as opposed, instead of using glazing fluid, I'm just gonna use the, the, the uh, matte medium here. And I mix this together. Now it looks maybe a little bit like I've added white paint in here. It will dry totally clear. Um, but it's, I've, I'm, diluting this color. So it's, this is a dark color. I add the matte medium to it, just like I'm glazing, and it goes a little bit lighter. All right, so I'm gonna paint this. Ooh, it's very blue. Here, let's... This is much more blue than I want. But it, I, I'm quite confident as it dries it's gonna go a little bit less blue but you know since this is my kind of shadow area this is a fun little place to experiment with I kind of like that this color anyway but
Hmm. The one thing I am noticing as I use this, as opposed to glazing fluid, is it's it's drying very quickly. It's very tacky already, especially when I get into like these thinner layers. You know, which in this case I might want to use a little bit of water. Yeah, I mean, this works, but I feel like I am having to, um, uh, it's just not as pleasant of an experience. So this is sort of like when you're cooking and you don't have any salt or something, you're like, ah. Oh, how am I going to finish this dish? And I go, everyone's going to be here in 10 minutes. So, okay, I'm going to go into the spice cabinet and see what I can mix up with what I've got. Okay, I'm going to use this same, while I'm here, I got it on my brush. I'm just going to paint it into some of these darker places. So the one, you know, the glazing fluid takes longer to dry, um, which, you know, if you're doing this kind of thing, it's it's nice to have that little bit more open time while you're painting. You're not so rushed. Again, I'm using a bigger wider brush to do all this as well, right? So I'm not really finicking in the details here. You know, if you add, I'm just kind of adding extra glazing fluid to my brush. It does sort of help a little bit. Or sorry, extra matte medium to my brush. Yeah. I guess, you know, if I was playing with this, I'm, I'm sure I could master it and I could figure out how to make it work for my purposes, but it is a little, a little frustrating. Okay, so um, I'm just going to take, I'm going to go to a slightly smaller brush, and then continue. This time I'm just going to go right into this darker color that I mixed, this uh, kind of really dark blue, without diluting it 
and I'm just going to start kind of, I'm going to go into some of these darker areas. see I'm using a bit of a, a bigger brush which is a little bit sloppy and less accurate but I find quite liberating I like this uh, this darker color. I think is is working for me, well for me on her fabric like this. sort of like diluted it a little bit. So I'm going to take this same color now. Do I have I used it all as I need? Okay, now I'm going to take this same color and I'm going to darken it even further. So I'm going to take this cool, maybe I'll even mix it right here, I'll just scrape some of this out, mix it right here, take some cool red, cool blue, warm blue. So it's even darker than this, probably doesn't show up on camera very well. I'm going to take this same dark color.
So this is sort of like using a really my a black or something, right? Except it's not black. I haven't used any. Well, you know, I haven't used any black in this painting whatsoever yet. Um, and this I will use some glazing fluid now. So I just took this color, added some glazing fluid. I'm just going to rub this in. So that I can kind of go into here and kind of just blend it out. how dark you want to make this and where the edge of the the darkness should be I kind of liked it maybe a little bit not quite as um, this darkness coming up so high I could wipe it away right now if I really wanted but I'm just going to integrate it with a little bit of this mop brush and blend it out a bit. So as I do that, you know, I try to dry that brush off a bit so that I'm not spreading pigment around. Okay, let's do the same thing over here. If you get areas like this, which are, I've kind of, I should maybe have used a blow dryer and kind of cleaned up and uh, dried some of this, that would have helped a bit. In fact, so I'm going to do that right now, just because it starts to kind of get splotchy like that. Ah. Although, just as a reminder, if I'm really unhappy with something, I can just take a rag with a little bit of water. Let's just, just as a demo. Even though I probably, I would have been able to make it work, but you know, I can just remove all of this here. That's a little, it's pretty dramatic when I do something like that. But it just is a, it's a reminder that, that nothing is ever totally lost. So I'm going to blow dry this and I'm going to fix all of that as if it was never there. But. Right, it's like boom. Look at that. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna blow dry that. We'll, this will be all fixed in a second. I'm going to let that dry. I might have to do a little bit of noodling in there afterwards. So I'm just going to clean a few brushes. So, you know, we're pretty close to being done. I should know, we never, it's like, that's part of my drinking game is to, whenever you hear me say that, go, oh, start panicking. Um, but um, I think what I want to do next, I want to, I should have used some of that same color in her hair. Actually, let's just do that while I got this color fixed. It's putting the same green that we've had in the background. Remember I left some spaces in her hair. I'm going to put that in a lot of her hair. That way when I go over with a little bit of black later on, I can leave a few little gaps. We'll have this nice bit of color glowing through there. Um... For all of this paint seizes up here and at the same color. Just gonna put a little bit of this darker stuff here. Yikes, bad idea to use a really wet mop brush. Okay, we'll have to 
Wait for that to dry before I do too much more to it. Okay, so I think what I want to do next is I want to start adding some of the patterning on her clothes. Uh, although, I just, yeah, I'm just going to wash these brushes just really quickly. This is why I love having a painting shirt, because I can just clean my brushes off on my clothes without any fear of ruining anything. I find it just so liberating. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I'm gonna do some uh, the the t the highlights on her clothes. And the flower here. So the flower, I'm going to take some white and magenta. And then I'm going to just mix it over here. Get a lot of white on here. And let's look. So I'm gonna refine this later, but I, I, I need to put some white in here. You could just paint white, really, to be honest, and then afterwards paint, you know, a um, little bit of pink on top of it, whatever works best, because this is gonna dry, it's gonna be a little more transparent. Um, where else do we want some highlight? I'm going to put some bright red here. So this is, we're gonna use some yellow in here.
So what's clear is that she wasn't really obsessed with like getting these patterns properly. She's just sort of hinting that there's like a pattern here. This looks like she actually wiped paint away with, with uh, a cloth and she took some turpentine and this right here, I guarantee you she wiped this paint right off, probably towards the end of the painting, which I think was a smart idea. She was probably kind of feeling like that this was getting kind of dark and heavy down here. And then rather than doing painting white as I'm doing it here, again she's painting with oil paint I bet you she was wiping paint away to reveal the lighter colors that were underneath here. now painting with acrylic paint and once it's dry there's really no way to wipe that paint off so I'm adding some white in there to help Okay, now I'm gonna, I'm just gonna clean my brush a little bit and just get some, uh, I'm gonna take some white, just pure white. I'm gonna paint the earring. I'm gonna paint, go later on, I'm gonna, paint um, actual colors on top of this, some blues. But because this is a pretty dark area, I'm worried that it won't show up very well. So by painting some white in there, I guarantee that it's gonna pop Okay, cool. I'm also going to dry my brush, take most of the paint off, and I'm going to come in here and add just a little bit of white. In and around her eyes like that. Almost a little bit much, right? Very subtle, but boy, it, go, it instantly makes a little bit of a change. Okay, so now let's mix um, this white with a little bit of the cool yellow. So we've got cool yellow. I'm just going to use a lot of white in here. And. Now let's come up and we'll do It's so, like, 
It's one of these things where it almost looks a little bit sloppy when I do it. And you're, you want to try to remember that this is, you know, unless you're always going to, you're going to frame a printout of the original right next to this, people won't have the original to refer to all the time. So if you don't want to make it look too rushed or whatever, then you don't have to. But uh, this kind of mark making she's doing looks like like a very like she's clearly a confident painter, and she's just like throwing paint right in there, making the pretty bold, very loose paint strokes in this area here. Joshua says, I think I'm going to paint the head just as a practice and use my oils instead. Sounds great. Um, you know, I would say that if you, if you don't have... Um, glazing fluid or slow dry medium painting portraits in acrylic is is really tricky to pull off and you you, you probably will enjoy painting with oils um, more for doing this kind of thing Okay. Now, as this dries, so there's a lot of, um, you know, you can see it went on quite bright, and then as it goes, it kind of starts to dry, and it even starts to look a little bit green and blue, right? If I want it to come back to the towards yellow, I'm just going to paint some pure yellow, cold or yeah cool yellow into some of this here maybe not over every line I just painted and that will bring its yellowness back All 
right, it, might, it still looks a little bit green. I can, I'll wait for it to dry. Uh, but while that's drying, I'm going to take, I'm actually going to paint some green. I'm going to take some cool blue and cold yellow. Mix a bit of white in here. A little bit more blue, more blue. A little bit more white. earrings here. Getting there, one little step at a time, and we'll wait for that to dry. I think I'm going to go to the lips here. It's kind of haven't been on the face in a little while, so I just take some cool red. I'm going to paint this directly. Looks like it needs to go a little bit darker, so I'm going to take a bit of the warm blue I have, mix that a bit because it's going to make it go a little bit more purpley. Paint that. Hmm, so there's some glazing fluid in there, so let's wait for that to dry. Right now it's very, very, very red. Uh, although, you know, while it's in this that color, I'm going to take some of this cool red. I'm going to paint it over some of my white that I had down here. And you know what? I think I'm going to darken that, this red, with a bit more blue. We're going to mix a bit of a darker color again. Take my warm blue. My cool blue. Uh, it's got lots of cool yellow still, so we'll use that. And warm blue. So just this ugly mix of colors. It's kind of reddish. Let's put a little more blue into it. Okay. So here's a dark color. Um, and then I'm going to just mix... Where can I put this? So this is my nice dark color. I'm just going to take my cool red and just steal a bit of that color. Now I get a much darker color that I can use to darken um, her sari here. Thank you. 
so this is working really well as like a darkening agent on top of this right now she really kind of went pretty wild here and kind of it looks almost messy like again i think she really she painted a lot of this painting was maybe not happy with certain areas especially towards the bottom and was wiping paint away wipe, wiping the oil paint away which creates a really neat effect we did that um a similar technique with acrylic painting when we did the um uh kate oh what's your last name kate uh, I'm driving you nuts. um it was our last painting of our acrylic painting class kate graham and so we did some of that using that a similar effect where we painted and then wiped paint away And I think it worked really well for that particular painting. So you can do that's that with uh, acrylic painting as well, but it's just you kind of have to do it while the paint is still wet. Like it's not a process that lends itself to paint that's already dried. some of these um, this magenta back into her sari up here. See, I'm mostly just painting over the pink or the, yeah, the pink that I had painted. helps kind of make it poppy and punch a bit. Okay, I'm gonna use some. Hmm, I'm gonna darken her lips a little bit while I'm right here. Actually, let's zoom in. Okay, so I just took. Again, this darker color that we've mixed before, um, I'm just using it to add to the red, the magenta, and I'm going to come in to, so the top lip is the darker lip. I'm going to use some glazing fluid with this magenta here. I'm just going to put it to the side. And we're just going to add a little bit of red into her um, 
on her cheeks and neck again. So very subtle, just brightening things up a little bit. Oops. You can even do that in some of the, the darker areas of the painting. What I really want is her cheeks. So I'll have to keep on going. I feel like the left side of her face I got. Probably don't want to go too much darker than that on the left side of her face. Here, though, I want to wait for that to dry. Then I'll come back and darken that. Um... Mine's a little bit bigger than the original, but hard to... Ay, ay, ay. At this scale, sometimes it's hard to get it, get it right. I'm certainly not a miniature, a miniaturist painter. I don't have the patience <laughs> that those people have. That's... That's wild, people who paint miniatures. Okay. Um, I'm gonna blow dry this because I want to be able to do that kind of the blush on her on her cheek without fear of if I use my mop brush to blend, like I'm not gonna smudge anything else. So. Um, okay, great suggestions, Joshua. I see you suggested Wassily Kandinsky, the um, uh, Russian uh, supremacist painter. Um, uh, JMW Turner, probably the the most beloved artist in all of English history, or from England, I mean. Um, uh, 
the Fighting Temerine. Yeah, that's a great painting. And lastly, say Jasper Johns for use stencils to create his number paintings and the USA flag. All great suggestions. Um, uh, the Jasper Johns used a technique. Um, which it was just on the tip of my head when I read that. Uh, with wa wax and caustic, so um, which is that's a that. I've actually never done wax encaustic painting. Um, it's a very tricky, difficult process, not particularly forgiving. Um, so I wouldn't be able to demonstrate that, but uh, we could do Jasper Johns. I, I used to really like Jasper Johns a lot when I was in college. I did some Jasper Johns stuff. Okay, great suggestions. I love those, Joshua, fantastic. Perfect, great, really great ideas. We'll do we'll we'll do them all in in good time for sure. So let's see. With I'd like to try to finish up in about twenty minutes. So I want to do a, a little bit more of the blush on her cheeks. So to do that, let's just get another brush here. Taking this red. Actually, you know what? I'm going to use a, a warmer red. Because I've been using cool red. And I think we just want a little bit more warmth in her cheeks. So slow dry medium. Some of this red, yeah, I think that's gonna work. Just wanna be careful I don't go too heavy handed. Oops, that's it's gonna wipe the paint off. So if you got you know, just you can take your time with um, glazing. Uh, okay. even nice to take um, some of this warm red and just put it into some of the shadows you won't even really see it much like it doesn't barely it won't register visually as like oh there's some bright red there or warm red but it warms things up even the shadows which you know on a face actually can be where some of the warmer colors actually are Okay, so we'll let that dry. We'll just come over here. Add a little bit more warmth. Painting a bit of the warm red over some of the cool red. Now we get a bit more of an electric kind of quality there. Um, so, you know, the question starts in my mind, I'm thinking to myself, how much more, 
um, do what do I want, what do I want on, what do I want to do with the face? I like the expression on her face in my painting. Right now, she just seems a little bit kind of bored and tired. In Amarada's painting, she looks like very melancholy and very sad and and like she has that thousand year or thousand yard stare kind of thing where she's just sort of looking vacantly into the distance mine just she just seems kind of like she's bored and you know so um the, the question kind of goes like what do i want to communicate how do i want people to feel when they look at it i'm putting this painting in my home and i'm gonna look at it and I, do I want to be looking at a painting of like a really sad, melancholic woman, or do I want it to be, you know, I, I, I really, I probably don't want a sad figure in my house. Now again, for I'm sure some people, like me just saying that I'm gonna change the expression of somebody's painting is like blasphemy. It's like. Well, then why are you painting this painting if you're going to change the way she looks and the fundamental expression on her face? And now you're just like, I totally get that. I totally get why that might be upsetting to some people. And I don't mean to, you know, um, um, offend them by, by doing this. But I just, I, 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 yeah, I, 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 the, when I look at it, I don't want to be feeling sad. I want it to feel somewhat uplifting and inspiring. And I don't think, I'll st obviously my painting is nowhere near as good as, as hers. Um, I just want, I guess I just, yeah, this is, this is my, this is becoming my painting now, right? As your painting starts to become your painting. So you can you feel free to you, to you have my permission to to take some liberties and, and explore and um you know if you want to put sunglasses on her or baseball hat on there you know there's be certainly some people who would find that upsetting but i think that's i, I i'm sure emerita would be um I'm sure just because she is such a wild character, I think she would have a good laugh at that. I think she wouldn't be offended by that at all. So anyway, just wanting to put that out there because I know, you know, sometimes I get messages, can I do this? Or I, maybe younger students do that much more often. Anyway, um, I think, you know, I'm getting pretty close here. What do I want to do when I look at these two paintings side by side now? I, I do want to do a little bit of darkening around the eyes, and I'm going to go back with a, with a darker color. Maybe not black, because I think black will just stand out. I'm going to do a little bit more black around a few places and just clean up some of these edges. Um, so I think what I'm going to do now, I'm going to do a little bit of dark glazing. So I'm going to put my glazing fluid here my brush just scoop into this dark color this dark color is just any combination of two blues one red and one yellow and you're just going to get a nice dark color whichever one you want to use so i'm just putting this on my brush which i can use just to do any final I'm going to use this to glaze into some of the darker areas. Because it's not totally black, and, and because I'm not using it at its full strength, it will kind of integrate pretty well into the rest of the painting. Right, you can see how kind of not super super dark it is but it's a great one to put use to just go into some of the shadows deep in the shadows which are going to help make the overall painting kind of pop a little bit more
like she's painted these hands quite dark, right? They kind of disappear um, into the surrounding background a bit. So it's up to you as to how dark you want to make that. I don't know how if I'm going to go too much darker than they are currently. So this will be perfect. It's just taking it a little bit darker. shouldn't have put that last layer on her neck. It's going to get a little bit too dark down there. So I'll just wipe it away. Darkening a little bit on the white. Of, remember, I put some white under the eyes. Darkening that a little bit. So, not so bright there. Okay. So now I'm coming into the final stretch here. I'm just using some of the darkest color that I've mixed without any of the medium. It's 
slow dry medium or glazing fluid or um, uh, the, uh, acrylic um, medium, uh, matte medium, and just kind of tightening up some of these lines for one final pass. Pretty confident with the bottom half of this painting. I feel like that's pretty good. Or another way to think it's not going to get much better <laughs> at this point unless I put another couple hours into it. Oh wow, look, um, uh, just looking at some of the comments here. So Heidi says, wow, finished, touch me not. While watching, listening here, I got to go to attend my to my sick cat. Oh yes, I'm sorry your cat was sick. I hope it's getting better. And Joshua says, good night. Also one more question, are you able to make the traceables? How are you, so I use, to make the tracings, I use my iPad my iPad Pro 2019, I think I got that, um, with uh, Procreate. And so I just bring the painting in and I use my Apple Pencil to go over the pencil or the, the, the painting and create the images that way. Anybody could do it. Nothing particularly special about mine. I will say that, you know, I've had 20 years of experience and uh, of and also paint doing lots of tracing so I think people think of tracing as like this very easy simple afterthought and if you ever tried doing it you'd be surprised at, at how difficult it is to make something that looks good um, so just as a bit of a word of warning when you when you if you try that it, it can take a little is a little bit of uh, not the easiest thing to do, but it does make a big difference. It helps kind of get this going here. Okay. Um, let's. Okay. So 
I'm going to blow dry this. The last things I'm going to do is just some outlining on the face, and then we'll be done, I think. Unless there's something grand that I'm just missing here, but I think we're pretty much done. taking this dark dark color that I've mixed again I haven't used a single drop of black at all in this entire painting and coming back here if you do nothing else just painting the eyes a little bit darker um, or just the you know like the pupils of the eyes will help make them pop If you really wanted, you know, a little bit of black would would go instantly, would, would make a big difference. Almost so much that it might go too far. You, know, you have to be careful. Black is a really, really dominant color, so... smaller it was a pretty big ear um, volume to that air
soldier. Just taking some glazing medium and rubbed the this my darkest color into the glazing medium, just to kind of put a little bit of a darker area on this side of her face. Okay, am I done? Can I walk away? Interesting. I see, now I'm just I noticed that she had a little. Well, kind of outline on that side. That was pretty smart of her. Just kind of darken the inside of this fold. Okay. I think that's good. Good enough for government work, as my grandfather used to say. Um, I like that. I like it a lot. I like it. It's it's uh, a little bit. It's a different painting than I've done. Um, just even the approach and the kind of steps that we did. I like that it's a little bit raw and a little bit, a little bit messy. Quite frankly, um, I'd actually say that hers was messier than mine. Um, I I don't have the confidence of a great master like she has. But she really allowed herself to, to, like, she wouldn't have been finicking, in, like, that I've been doing for, like, last hour. She just would have gone boom, 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 boom. Done. Um, but that's why she's the master and I am the apprentice, right? Uh, okay. So I'm looking at the earrings. I could do more work on those earrings. But you know what? It's dinner time and I'm, I'm out. I'm done. <laughs> okay, everybody, if you enjoyed today's show, I would love it if you were to like the episode. If you uh, want more of this, please subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell so you know when new videos are coming. If you're feeling generous and you want to thank me through your financial contribution or donations, there's a link to the PayPal below. Please consider donating. That's how I keep all the, the this going. 
um, and uh, share it with your friends and family. I'd love to see what you guys do on Saturday in uh, this later this week. On Saturday at 4 o'clock Pacific Time, I'm going to look at the works that you guys have done and give you feedback on it. We're going to celebrate. No painting involved. You can wear your, your best clothes and your bow ties and your suits and fancy Easter hats or whatever your, uh, what do they call their, not the altar, fascinators. You can wear your fascinator to uh, to join me and we'll talk about your, your work. Okay, everybody. Well, um, this was a fun fun painting to do i'm happy to have finished it it looks great i can't wait to see what you guys have done we'll see you in a couple days we're going to talk about ay jackson one of the canada's greatest painters certainly one of the great uh he was the really the the founder of the group of seven so we're finally taking a look at ay jackson one of my personal favorite artists but again <laughs> we're painting all my favorite artists and we've got some great suggestions here um from Joshua, so I'm gonna reincorporate those into the going class. Uh, I see people here. Good night, good night, says Joshua. Deborah, good night, Heidi. Um, Gail says, gotta go. Always, as always, great class. My gal has an expression of, oh my. Uh, laugh out loud. Not sure how I managed that one, but oh well, thank you, Michael. <laughs> And Deborah says, I must go also. Uh, very well done, Michael. Love it. Great class. Good night, everyone. Peter says, I'm pretty happy with mine. I'm able to sign it and walk away from it. And that's that's the goal, right? Something you can feel proud of. You can put your name on the back of and you can put it up on your wall and, and not feel ashamed of it. <laughs> okay, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your evening. We'll see you again on Thursday uh, and Saturday. Put it on your calendar. Don't forget. <laughs>